is one of the ways to earn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. There's a hadith from the Holy Prophet where he says, I swear by the one who has sent me as a bearer of glad tidings and a warner, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never punish a true monotheist. Meaning, one of the keys to Allah's rahmah is understanding tawheed. You know, brothers and sisters, I always say this to communities that I visit. You and I, we have this impression that tawheed is a very simple topic. It's a very simple subject. Tawheed is what our children learn when they go to madrasa on Sundays, right? The last time many of us have even studied tawheed was probably when we were kids. We say, oh, tawheed, let the children learn. You know, the easy stuff. But is tawheed a simple subject? Is it an elementary topic? There's a book written by a Sunni scholar. He's a Sufi. But many of our ulama, they've written a commentary on his book. They've written a sharh of his book. His book is called Manazil Sa'irin, The Stations of the Wayfarer. Because to get to Allah, this is a journey. And we mentioned that every journey has a starting point and a destination. The first manzila is what? Babul Yaqwa, the station of wakefulness. You have to wake up. You might be breathing, you might be biologically alive, but perhaps you're spiritually dead. There are many people, they live 50, 60, 70 years. He's healthy, he has a strong heart. He's biologically alive, but spiritually he's dead. He's been dead all his life. And when does he wake up? He, he's, when is he awakened? He's awakened when Malakul Maut comes. Many of us, unfortunately, that's when we're gonna wake up, when we die. Have you been to the cemetery? If you go to the cemetery, what do they typically write on the tombstone? Rest in peace. There's this idea that the deceased is sleeping. But from an Islamic perspective, if we wanted to really write something on the tombstone, what we should really write is what? Now you are awake. So this is the beginning. You have to wake up. You have to know that you were created for a higher purpose. So this was station one. And then he goes through each of the stations. Station two is Tawbah. Until you reach the final manzila, station 100, which is what? Tawheed. Can you imagine that? All of this struggling, jihad al nafs, all of it is so you can really understand Tawheed. Tawheed is what Ibrahim was. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Ibrahim was a true monotheist. You and I. We believe in Tawheed from a theoretical perspective. We think Tawheed is the beginning, and then I go on to more advanced subjects. But Tawheed is the goal. Tawheed was the last words that came out of the mouth of Imam al Hussein on the 10th of Muharram. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam ended his shahada, he crowned his shahada with the following words when he was laying on the plains of Karbala. What did he say? Did he say, Why me? His last words were what? I am pleased with your decree. This is Tawheed. Look at how merciful Allah is. These are hadith that teach us that having the right aqidah attracts His mercy. Allah is basically saying that if you know me, I'll have mercy on you. I'll forgive you. Just knowing me is one of the doors of mercy and forgiveness. If you just know who I am. But there is no sect in Islam that will truly allow you to understand and appreciate Tawheed like the madhab of Ahlul Bayt. Don't you notice that other madhahib, they start to attribute human qualities to God? The Tawheed is tarnished. There's a hadith, for example, mentioned in Bukhari, which we, the followers of Ahlul Bayt, we don't accept. Rasulullah allegedly was with his companions in the middle of the night. And Rasulullah was looking at the moon. And he says to his ashab, سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ كَمَا تَرَوْنَ هَذَا الْقَمَرِ That you will see God in the hereafter on the Day of Judgment in the same way that you see this moon now. This is not the Tawheed of Ahlul Bayt. When Imam al-Ridha alayhi salam was summoned by Ma'mur, he was passing, he came from Medina and he passed by Naysa Abur. Naysa Abur was a learning center. It was a place where many ulama used to reside. When they received news that Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha is going to pass, they all went to the outskirts of Naysa Abur to receive the Imam, to greet him. They saw his caravan and the caravan stopped. These are ulama. They asked the Imam, can you give us a hadith from your grandfather, Rasulullah. The Imam, what hadith does he share with him? He shares a hadith about Tawheed. 
But first, you know, people always ask when you give them a hadith, what's the senad? Is this a weak hadith, authentic hadith? The imam gives them the senad because he's talking to ulama. He says, An Abi, I heard this hadith from my father, Imam al kawm From his father, Imam al Sadiq. From his father, Imam al Baqir. From his father, Imam Zayn al Abidin. From his father, Imam al Hussein. From his father, Amir al Mu'mineen. From Rasulullah. From Jibreel. From God Himself. Is there any hadith? that has a more pure chain, flawless. Hadith Qudsi he shares. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى كَلِمَةُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ حِصْنِي The statement that there is no God but Allah is my fortress. فَمَنْ دَخَلَ حِصْنِي أَمِنَ مِنْ عَذَابِ Whoever enters this fortress is protected from my punishment. And then the Imam gets back in his caravan and it moves a few steps and then the Imam opens the curtain and he says بِشُرُوطِهَا وَأَنَا مِنْ شُرُوطِهَا with his conditions. Because only Al Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, <coughs> only they have experienced Tawheed. They're the only ones that have really reached that maqam of Tawheed. Therefore, they have no shubuhat. So, this is number one. One of the ways to attract Allah's mercy is to know Him, have ma'rifah of Him. And very simply, brothers and sisters, is become acquainted with the 99 names of Allah. Become familiar with His names. If you learn the names of Allah, believe me, you will even appreciate the Qur'an at a much deeper level. 